So here we are again, locked down, waiting anxiously each day for the numbers and wondering when this will end and when things will go back to normal. We're tired and frustrated and bored. And all of those emotions can bubble over into anger. When things are tough, it's tempting to look back and wonder where it all went wrong. Where was that moment when a different decision might have changed things? It's tempting to do this with our government during these times, but even when the pandemic wasn't raging, we might have been tempted to look back at the church or to look back at our world or to look back at our own lives and ask that same question. And when we look back like that, we can often imagine that we could find some brief shining moment where things were pretty good before they all started going downhill. Rick Morley, who's an Episcopal priest in the United States, writes, There was one brief shining moment in the Hebrew Bible where things were pretty good. We had safety and security. We had the presence of God walking among us. We had a nice garden. And then we blew it. We had only been given one thou shalt not, and we couldn't manage the not part. So we ate of the tree. It was the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And what happened when you ate of this tree? Your eyes were opened and you became like God, knowing good and evil. But there was another tree in the garden, the tree of life. And what happened when you ate of that tree? Well, we find that out when God talks of the consequences of eating from the tree of knowledge. In Genesis, we read, Then the Lord said, See, the man has become like one of us, knowing good and evil. And now he might reach out his hand and take also from the tree of life and eat and live forever. So obviously we ate from the wrong tree. We were never told that we couldn't eat from the tree of life, but we ate from the tree that we were told not to. We could have lived forever in that garden with God. We were so close, it could have been great. One brief shining moment and then it was all downhill. Of course, in John chapter 6, Jesus isn't talking about trees and fruit, but rather bread. But he talks about this bread in a familiar way. He says, this is the bread that comes down from heaven, so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever. Of course, Jesus is speaking of himself. He's speaking of the benefits of believing and abiding in him, of consuming him and making him a part of us and us a part of him. And he's so very clearly identifying himself as the new creation, the new garden, the new tree, the new fruit. God's dream in Genesis was that we would live forever with him. And in Jesus, that dream gets a fresh start. In Eden, it could have been great, but we messed it up. But in Jesus, it could be great again and great forever. Like before, and like always, the choice is before us. This time round, we're not being told, thou shalt not. This time round, we're being invited to feast on the bread of life. It's quite possible to get stuck in the past, wondering how it might have been different, if only. If only I'd turned left instead of right. If only I'd taken that job instead of the other one. If only I'd listened to my mother. If only we'd listened and left the fruit on the tree. In Christ, we have the chance to begin again with a new creation, a new garden, a new tree. And over and over and over, we're invited to make a choice. How might it be different this time? I'll finish with a poem from Mary Oliver. 
Who made the world? Who made the swan and the black bear? Who made the grasshopper? This grasshopper, I mean. The one who has flung herself out of the grass. The one who is eating sugar out of my hand. Who is moving her jaws back and forth instead of up and down. Who is gazing around with her enormous and complicated eyes. Now she lifts her pale forearms and thoroughly washes her face. Now she snaps her wings open and floats away. I don't know exactly what a prayer is. I do know how to pay attention, how to fall down into the grass, how to kneel down in the grass, how to be idle and blessed, how to stroll through the fields, which is what I've been doing all day. Tell me what else I should have done. Doesn't everything die at last and too soon? Tell me, what is it you plan to do with your one wild and precious life? Amen.